now let me look at this uh, example so in this example we have a thin plate that is a fix uh, the ceiling at one end of this uh, structure and the other end of this structure is uh, left uh, free so we fix this uh, structure to the ceiling that is mentioned there we have a thin uh, steel plate that has a uniform thickness t equal to one inch so in this figure is just showing the cross-sectional uh, area of our structure but if we view this in 3d we can view that this structure has a thickness of a one inch and the material used has an uh, elastic uh, modulus of e equal to 30 times 10 to the power of 6 pound per square inch and the weight density of 0 0.2836 pound per uh, inch uh, cube so this actually uh, refers to if we take one inch a uh, cube so one uh, the length one uh, we take uh, the width equal to one and the height equal to one of these uh, small uh, element and these small elements actually contain uh, 0 0.2836 um, pound of uh, of the weight the weight is subjected to a point load so we have a point load that acting at the midpoint of the structure so the structure, the whole structure length, which is 24 inch, then this load P, point load P, which is uh, reside at the midpoint of the structure at 12, at 12 inch from, uh, from this end here. So we are asked to determine the displacement at the midpoint and also at the uh, free end of this uh, structure determine the normal stress in the plate and also reaction force uh, at the support in order to solve this particular problem so starting from if we view this from the physical geometry of our structure which is we have the structure that is looks something like this so we have a non-uniform uh, thin plate which is the total length is uh, 24 and then we have the load uh, P which is acting at the mid point of this uh, the mid length of this uh, structure the first step in order to solve this particular problem is to understand where uh, the load acting on the structure what is the bonding conditions uh, applied to the structure so in this case we have a fixed type of the condition then from there we can start to uh, do the discretizations or subdivide our structure into smaller elements so in this example we divide our structure into two sections or two uh, elements by subdivided at, at where we have the point load acting on our uh, on our uh, components or on our structure after we subdivide our structure then we will perform the discretization in such a way that our structure later on will transform into a uh, 1d bar uh, element by taking the midpoint of each uh, section and then a uh, project it to the top and to the bottom so that we will have the uh, a constant uh, rate diameter from the top to the bottom of each element one and from the top to the bottom of each 
uh, from the element number number two so we did for this element number one and this is element number number two so now this uh, our physical geometry which is uh, initially we have a tapered plate now it is transformed into the into the uh, bar problems and then actually we can further simplify this into the uh, final element model which is by representing uh, by a single uh, straight lines uh, element and then we label it properly uh, notes one two three this is element one and element number two and then it is very important as well if we can label the uh, displacements we have q2 and then we have a q3 which is the value of the q1 q2 q3 will be uh, calculated uh, later so when we have this done then actually we need to determine the area the cross-sectional area of our element and this uh, value of area is, is very important to be used in the k uh, matrix later so in order to determine the area of uh, element number one so we will uh, first take the physical geometry as our reference so what we need to do is to take the the average value of the area now the area uh, at the top here is actually 6 multiplied by 1 which is the thickness of this plate and the area of the bottom part of our element is actually 3 multiplied by 1 which is the length multiplied by the thickness of our plate so the thickness at this uh, particular section here at the mid section here will be 6 plus 3 divided by 2 which is we will get the average value between the top and the, the bottom part of this uh, structure here then it will give uh, 6 plus 3 divided by 2 equal to 9 divided by 2 then we will have 4.5 inch uh, square in terms of the uh, equivalent area at the mid uh, sections of our uh, structure but this information uh, still uh, require further refinements which is to obtain the equivalent area for the element number one which is uh, here and also for the element number two so using the same process uh, in order to determine the average uh, area of section one we will take the average uh, uh, area at this speed section and then we add it with the uh, six and then we divide by two then we will obtain this uh, average uh, area for the section number one which is given by 5.25 in square so for the element for element number two we will take this uh, the average value at the midpoint and then we add with the area at the uh, tip of this uh, plate then we uh, divide by two then we will get the uh, average area of section 2 which is this one all right now since we have all the uh, area uh, calculated for the a1 uh, and uh, a2 so next is to um, calculate the um, the elements of this uh, metric for each um, elements which is uh, this value later will be supplied to our um, k in our system of linear uh, equation so this two is actually in the, still in the local and then this is actually uh, referred to the 
a global system of a linear equation which is requires global element systems uh, metric and the global uh, force uh, force uh, vector so if we can remember um our k uh, matrix is given by a uh, e over l and then multiply by metric one negative one negative one and one so uh, we have to develop this um, element stiffness metric uh, for each uh, nodal point. So if we can still remember, this is our structure. Then our structure only contains uh, two, uh, two elements, where this is the nodes number one, node number two, nodes number three. This is the element number one, and then this is the uh, element number number two. So this structure is fits uh, on the uh, top end of uh, its uh, structure. So for the fixed uh, boundary condition, um, fixed boundary conditions is actually can be viewed like we uh, glue uh, this uh, end to the wall so that it can't move at all, or we drill and tighten this uh, end of uh, our structure to the wall as well. So in this case, um, if we refer to the displacement at nodes number one, at this particular point under the fixed boundary condition, there, there will be no displacement at all. At nodes number two and nodes number three, there is no uh, boundary conditions uh, apply. That means we may have some uh, displacement uh, occurs at this node two and nodes three. All right, for um, element number one, um, for the system, for the elements uh, stiffness metric, we first um, write the uh, element connectivity um, on top and on the side of our uh, metric system, which is in this case, for uh, element number one, it is a connected um, within nodes number one and nodes number two so it is uh, important to write one and two one and two which is to show the element connectivity of our element for the uh, element number one so when we have this then we look at the boundary condition then we found that at nodes number one there is no uh, displacement so in this case uh, for a condition where we have no uh, displacement or q equal to zero, then actually we can eliminate the row and column number one. This means actually this um, rows and column number one is uh, uh, is a non-active uh, uh, elements in this matrix. Only the active elements, which is just uh, the element at row two and column column two. So instead of we write everything um, as we have in this uh, lecture slide, so actually we can reduce uh, the the uh, our workload by um, writing uh, only the uh, active uh, elements. Um, only the active element in uh, in our uh, in our uh, elements. We can develop the similar thing for K two, which is for K two uh, both um, Q one and Q two. Uh, there 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 is no uh, body con condition applied to these uh, two nodes. So all uh, elements uh, will be. Uh, and active uh, elements so since there is no boundary condition applied so all elements which is active so in this case for element number two it is connected between uh, node two and node three so we write it two three two and three given that the thickness of our structure which is one inch the um, Modulus of uh, elasticity, uh, 30 times 10 to the power of 6 uh, power per square inch. 
length of our elements uh, is uh, they are equal which is 12 uh, inch the area of element number one and element number two is uh, as shown here so this value actually can be substituted into um, k1 and k2 so that we have uh, k1 equal to 30 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by 12 then we multiply straight away 5.25 into this um, our matrix so we have 5.25 and for the k2 uh, we have here the same value uh, or constant value um, outside of our uh, matrix then here we have we multiply 3.75 uh into or uh, all the uh, elements uh, in our matrix so we have 3.75 negative 3.75 negative 3.75 and 3.75 so don't forget to write the uh, address again so now we have k1 and k2 as shown here so to develop the k global which is we we add uh, the k1 and k2 according to their uh, address so we have the same um, constant value uh, outside so we bring it um, outside so our matrix here will be um, We have a two by two uh, matrix, which is will start uh, at uh, two, three, and two, uh, three. So the way we add the um, elements uh, in our matrix here, um, so the, the way we add the two matrix here is by adding um, elements by elements. So for example, uh, we look at uh, for the element number one, we have only two and two which is referred to this um, position two and two and then in uh, k2 we also have uh, two and two so if we have the uh, what we call it the uh, overlap um, uh, address of two and two so we have to uh, just add it um, straight away so in this case <clears throat> um, the elements in um, in our first uh, metric element here will be 5.25 from here we add by this 3.75 for the element 3 and 2 uh, or 2 and 3 so it's only uh, exists in k2 so we just uh, bring it uh, in this uh, K uh, global uh, 3 and 2 so only uh, contains in K2 so we just bring it and then similar to uh, this one as well so this is the global K metric but we call it at the reduce uh, K global or element stiffness metric that actually uh, written uh, for the whole complete uh, system so kg is the element stiffness metric for the whole system while k1 and k2 here which is uh, written for a segment of uh, our uh, element uh, only so that the different the difference between the local uh, and the global um, element stiffness and metric so now we have k1 and k2 and we have developed the uh, kg as well so next is to look at um, the external force that acting on our um, structures uh, dealing with the external forces where given that the weight density which is 0 0.2836 pound per inch cube which is refers to the fb and then we have the traction force uh, equal to 36 uh, pound per fix which is referred to the traction force t and then we have the point load which is acting at the midpoint of our 
uh, structures um, about 100 of pound so this actually uh, information uh, is required uh, in order to develop the global uh, force of vector uh, f p which is to supply in the uh, k q uh, equal to uh, f uh, equations or uh, our system of linear equation but in order to solve this um, f g is actually um, refers to the submissions of uh, contributions uh, from the uh, fb then we add the contribution from the traction force and then we add again with the contribution from the uh, point load so first let me deal with the fb so if we can remember the fb which is uh, given by a l uh, f over 2 one and one so we have to develop this uh, fb for each uh, element so for the element number one and also for the uh, element number uh, number two so let me first uh, develop this for the uh, element number one so for the element number one now we know that we have 5.25 multiplied by this uh, length and then we have the traction uh, the body force which is given by 0 0.2836 uh, and then we distribute it uh, equally to the uh, each nodal point one and one similarly we develop for the uh, f2 which is we have 3.75 which is the cross-sectional uh, area of uh, element number two then multiply by this then we divide it by 2 distribute it uh, equally to each nodal point and then from this actually um, um, we can uh, return it as uh, f1 which is uh, equal to uh, 12.2836 over uh, over 2 then uh, we multiply this um, value here into this uh, vector so we have 5.25 5.25 and then similarly for element number 2 we have so when we do this actually we would like to uh, keep only a constant value uh, outside of our vector so that the value um, this value uh, they are equivalent between the f1 and f2 so that it will be easier for us to do the um, to the submissions so now we have this that we should apply the element connectivity for the element number one we put one and two for the element number two we two we put uh, two and two and three so at this stage actually we can start um come up with the um the total uh, force due to the body force which is uh equal to um 12 0 0.2836 divided by 2 but now here we have um, our metric system which is 1 2 and 3 which is uh, in fact we can eliminate this um, the value um, at nodes number 1 due to due to the fixed body condition but if you if you want to list everything we can list uh, uh, the whole things uh, here so if we would like to um, show everything then we substitute um, all elements into this uh, global um, force due to the body force and we add um, this uh, element by element so for the element number one is only add this uh, in the element number in the uh, element number one so we have 5.25 
for the element number two we have um the overlap value which is uh, from the uh, f1 and f2 so we have to add it together and then for the element number three it's only exists uh, on this uh, element number two so we bring it here so we have to add this and to so if we add these two actually it will bring us uh, to the value of nine so i replace it this value here by uh, 9.9.0 after we uh, add this uh, two value 5.25 and 3.75 we add it then we get this and numbers nine so if we solve this um equation here actually will give us this a uh, number which is refers to the fall due to the um, body force so the second uh, force that apply to our system which is uh, the traction force which is uh, about 3 uh, 36 uh, pound per fix then we know that for 1d bar uh, problem uh, the traction uh, force can be actually um, obtained uh, by solving these uh, equations uh, as we derived in our uh, earlier uh, slides so similarly since this traction force um, uh, applied to the whole system then we have to develop the t for each element so uh, for the element number one we have uh, 36 divided by uh, 12 which is uh, to convert from uh, fixed uh, to int where one uh, fixed uh, equal to uh, 12 uh, inch so we have to divide this um, value by 12 and then we multiply by the length of this element which is uh, 12 as well and then we divide it by 2 which is we have to transfer this um, traction force uh, equally to each nodal node as we discussed uh, before then we have these numbers and similarly we develop for uh, the t uh, 2 we have um, the similar uh, value as well because the similar tension force uh, applied to the element number and uh, number 2 and in this case is um, we have to write the element connectivity as well so that it will be easier for us to add uh, these two um, contribution for the traction force to form the global force due to the uh, traction traction force if we solve this then naturally uh, we can cancel out 12 and 12 and uh, 36 divided by 2 so we get here 18 and uh, 18 so if we multiply this 18 uh, into this um, our vector then we obtain the uh, t1 which is uh, 18 and 18 and uh, t2 which is uh, equal to t1 which is um, 18 and uh, 18 as well so don't forget the element connectivity uh, which is uh, very important when we um, are going to uh, assemble the our uh, t um, matrix so for the t global we add the two which is according to uh, their uh, address as well so we have one two and three so at notes number one we have on the 18 and notes number two we have uh, two contributions from the notes number two 18 plus 18 we have uh, 36 and then we have uh, another 18 here 
for the last uh, force that attain on our element which is uh, in the form of a uh, point loops so this point loop is very straightforward since our loop is acting on the uh, on the midpoint since the loop um, that we have uh, acting on this um, point number two um, then we actually can write here actually we can level uh, everything uh, p1 uh, p2 and p3 uh, p3 but the only load that apply to this another uh, point which is at node number two which is um 100 pound there is no external load applied um, to the nodes number one and number three so we can write this uh, equal to zero so in this case our uh, the point load the global for the point load which is zero one hundred and and zero so we write this uh, as well one two and three but um since um, the nodes number one again here we have a fit bondy condition actually this element can be uh, removed in our um, equations right now once we have all these um, element stiffness metric and the external force uh, returns or calculated um, in a global um, or for the whole system then we can uh, write this uh, k and f in the form of the uh, kq equal to f or our system of linear equation uh, as shown uh, here so this is our k uh, matrix this is our q uh, matrix and then this is the uh, our uh, f uh, matrix the global f matrix which is this one is um, as I taken from the F uh, B uh, global so this is the traction force as we calculated just now after we assemble it and then this is the uh, point load as we uh, assemble it so the element number one is not written here because we already eliminate it due to the uh, fixed bondy condition so once we um, to solve this um, this uh, system of linear equation we add all these uh, force uh, vector for, uh, first so that we have these uh, numbers or values here and from this actually we can solve um, this uh, problem by um, using uh, any uh, system of uh, linear uh, equations uh, solver whether it is in the form of uh, Gaussian uh, eliminations or uh, other um, form of a uh, system of uh, linear equation solver but the similar problem or the similar um, uh, equation here can be solved uh, by using the uh, calculator in order to obtain the uh, unknown value of q2 and uh, q3 so when we solve this we actually um, able to obtain uh, the value of for the q2 and q3 so when we solve the uh, system of linear equation So when we solve this system of linear equations, for example, using the calculator, then actually it will give us the um, the unknowns. Uh, it will give the value uh, to uh, the unknowns. Um. So when we solve this um, system of linear equations using a calculator, for example, then it will give these uh, unknown. Uh, 
q2 and q3 which is uh, we know that um, priorly uh, q1 equal to 0 and the only the calculated value which is q2 and q3 which is um, given by So once we solve this uh, system of linear equations um, by using uh, any uh, system of uh, linear equation solver, whether it is in the form of Gaussian uh, eliminations or um, something else, um, or the similar uh, problem can be solved um, using your calculator then it will give actually the value for the unknowns that we would like to obtain from this uh, system uh, of linear equations uh, q2 and q3 then we can uh, obtain that uh, our uh, q if we list all the q here q1 q2 q3 and we know that q1 which is um, from the fixed body condition equal to zero and the only the calculated value from the system of linear equation which is uh, q2 and q3 and they are given um, by 1.339 times to 10 power of negative 5 and q3 equal to 1.559 times 10 to power of negative 5 inch so if if we look at these uh, problems um, under the loads given under the geometry that we have and the material we use the displacement at nodes number two and nodes number three is actually very very minimal which is uh, close to uh, zero so this is actually shows um, step by step how we can solve the uh, our problem up to uh, obtaining the uh, displacement at each another another point So after we obtain this um, the displacement at each another point, um, actually we can uh, draw uh, the graph of this uh, displacement. Let's say this is our nodes numbering. So we have nodes number one, uh, nodes number two, and nodes number three. And then we can write the uh, displacement Q uh, in unit inch then um, according to the what we have calculated just now we can um, plot the graph here for a uh, node number one we have zero displacement so it will be there uh, for the nodes number two uh, we have 1.339 yeah we just uh, approximate uh, it's located somewhere there 1. 339 and then for the note number three it is on the um, very small uh, variations maybe somewhere uh, somewhere there so this is actually refers to the uh, 1.559 and all of this is written in this uh, 10 to the power of negative 5 so from there we actually can um, connect the the two dot here to show that how these elements um, varies uh, from one point to uh, to another, and this information actually can be used to obtain the uh, what we call as the um, normal uh, stress, normal strain, and also the uh, normal uh, stress. Where um, the normal stress. Um, for each element is actually um, given by E multiplied B multiplied by Q so for the element number one so we can uh, take it E multiplied by B multiplied by Q for the uh, element number one which is we will use these two value in order to obtain the um, stress in our uh, element number number one 
So now let's we look at this how we can solve this. So Q1 equal to uh, we have 30 times to the power of 6 and then multiply by B. We know that B which is 1 over length of our elements and then multiply by negative 1 and 1 and then we have 0 and 1.339 uh, time to the power of negative 5 so if we solve this all then we will obtain the expressions for the value for um, sigma 1 which is equal to 33.48 pound per square uh, inch The similar process can be done for the element number 2 but for the element number 2 will take the Q value for the element number 2 which is 1.339 and 1.559 times to 10 uh, to the power of negative 5 and gives a Q2 equal to uh, 6.5 pound per uh, square inch. And the last one here is to uh, obtain uh, the reactions at um, the support. So if I can draw again here our element which is uh, we have the support at nodes number 1. Then we have the force uh, applied at nodes number 2. So from there we can expect that uh, we will have um, the reactions at the support which is in the opposite directions to the force uh, to the direction of force at, uh, as it apply at nodes number two so so this is the reactions so this is the reaction r and then this is our uh, external force that acting on these uh, structures to obtain the uh, reaction, then um, to obtain the reaction at the support, then we have to come back to our system of linear equation, which is um, this equation. Uh, but we have to uh, modify a little bit this equation by adding the reaction terms uh, into our system of a linear equation. So in this case, we have to write the uh, a complex system of a linear equation that contains all the um, elements and its um, elements of connectivity. That means we have to write the the full system of linear equation instead of um, the reduced system of linear equation. To obtain the reaction at the support, as we um, shown in these uh, figures here, where our support is uh, at located at nodes number one, then we will expect there will be the reactions um, to this uh, support due to the loads that apply to uh, to our system. So in order to obtain the reactions uh, force at the support then we have to write the full uh, system of a linear equation uh, which is kq equal to f but we have to modify a bit our system of uh, linear equations by adding uh, the, re the term reactions uh, to the uh, right side of this um, equation so now we have our system of uh, linear uh, equation read as kq equal to f plus r. So if we list down uh, everything here, the whole system, so we have our metric k here, which is we have the full system um, 1, 2, 3. And then we have the um, displacement, the calculated displacement. Uh, all the values we uh, include uh, it here and then this is the um, global forces that acting on our body then we have our the term reaction which is r1 r2 and r3 
but we know that the duration only uh, apply to the notes number one so what we can do from this um, equation here is solving only the first uh, equation here uh, in order to in order to obtain the value for uh, r1 so we can ignore the uh, equations number two and we can ignore the equation number number three so if you solve this um, uh, equation r uh, equation number one we have three equation here so if we solve equation number one it will give us that uh, R1 or the reactions uh, that attain at nodes number 1 equal to 202.68 uh, pound in the negative directions to our uh, coordinate systems. So that's mean here uh, at nodes number 1. So we have a positive uh, X in this direction. So the the reaction force will be uh, in this direction and the amount of the reaction force acting uh, on this particular node which is um, equal to um, 202.68 uh, pound.